week we showed you the first part of our interview with quarterback Max Hall, where he discussed how he ended up at BYU. This week, Max talks about that famous 4th and 18 play against Utah and the goal of playing in a BCS game. Max, uh, Bronco Mendenhall has talked a lot about tradition, spirit, and honor. How do you carry on the tradition, especially at the quarterback position? Yeah, the tradition at BYU, it's full of great players and, and a lot of great teams. And uh, to look back and see some of those guys and how they conducted themselves and how they played on the field, um, it's just an honor to be able to, to be a part of this team, part of this program. And for Coach Mendenhall to have the program where it is now and to be going uh, where it is now, uh, it's just it's huge for us and for me it's just a blessing for me to be part of it and um, it makes you work hard every day it makes you want to live up to the expectations and to honor those who played before you um, and so we're just doing everything we can to do that and to win football games and to conduct ourselves right off the field and uh, do everything we can to be the best. What was the the funnest game to plan for you this year? I know there were some games down to the wire some games you pulled out at the end. Man there, there was a uh... There's a lot of fun games. I think I really started coming along as far as how I was playing, uh, kind of, you know, Colorado and then TCU. But, I mean, it doesn't get any better than a rivalry game. And to, to play against Utah and to have that kind of an outcome and for it to come down to a fourth down play where you got to convert and then to have Harvey run it in at the end. And uh, it was just a special game and, and a fun time and a game I'll always remember. And so if I had to pick one game, you know, it would definitely be that Utah game. Okay, tell us about the fourth and 18. <laughs> the, a, a couple of passes, one's almost intercepted, one's you know, dropped there, and then fourth and 18. What was the play call, and how did you see it? Uh, it was kind of, kind of a weird situation. You know, uh, having, you know, I fumbled the first down play, and then two incompletions after that, and one of those, uh, kind of the ball spun up in the air and almost got intercepted, and so we kind of caught some breaks. And then for it to come down to that, um, we just kind of ran trips to the right, and what we just really call a four vertical play and I happened to just the idea popped in my mind to give Austin a double move on the outside um, and as I went through my progression I was thinking I'm gonna look at my tight ends in the middle and if they're not open I'm gonna throw it up outside and hope Austin can make a play but I think what happened is me having to step up and roll out of the pocket froze the corner a little bit and allowed Austin to get open and I just threw it as high and as far as I could and uh, luckily uh, he caught it so did you think maybe you could run for the first down? Because that cornerback bid on that. If no, you had to, I didn't. No? I, I knew I had to throw it. 18 is a lot. 18 is kind of a long ways. Uh, and so I knew I had to throw it. And again, when I saw Austin, how open he was, my eyes were real big. And it just kind of said, just make the throw and, and make it happen. Another defining play on the season was uh, Ethan Manu Malayuna's block in the uh, Las Vegas Bowl. What did you see from your perspective? Because he didn't really get off the ground. It was kind of a low kick. <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, I was, I was on the sideline right next to uh, uh, some of the coaches and I didn't know what was going to happen. I still, I was hoping someone would step up and make a play. Um, and he had hit field goals, two field goals yeah, from 50 and, plus. Yeah, and so he, yeah. Was, he was making field goals and there, I thought there was a good chance he was going to make it. So uh, when he kicked it and I just kind of saw the ball spiral funny, uh, it was just kind of like a, an unbelievable play and when you watch the replay you see um, the effort that our, that our defensive line gives to get there and um, you see Ethan throw his guy and jump up and make a play so just a phenomenal way to end the season I think. Now in 2008 there's a lot of expectation around here for perfection for BCS those terms are being tossed around a lot. Would you feel disappointed if you did not go to a BCS game? Um, slightly I think. I think um, expectations are, are really high here like you said and, and that's our goal to get there. I think if we don't get there this year, I don't think it'll be a huge disappointment. We definitely want to be there, um, but we know we got to work at it. And uh, Coach Menahal always talks about how we moved one spot in one year uh, from last year. And if we just keep getting better every year and, and getting closer to our goals, then we'll get there someday. So do I want it to happen this year? Absolutely. And we're going to work as hard as we can to get there, and um, we'll see what happens. Brian Keel and Austin Colley, friends of yours, they, they've called you cocky and arrogant before. <laughs> What's your take on that? And they're obviously friendly com compliments. Um, I, it's just friendly competition. It started with me on the scout team, uh, kind of wanting to kind of bring a spice to practice or a competitive nature to practice. And so I would kind of, I chant at the defensive players a little bit just to kind of get a more competitive nature. And uh, that's just how I am. I love playing the game. Uh, I hate to lose. I want to win. And um, I think it's more confidence that, than it is cockiness. But um, I think you also got to just have have to have that to be a good quarterback and uh, you want your teammates to be confident in you and know that uh, you're going to get everything that you have 
And so, I don't know, we have a lot of fun. We play a lot of different games, and, and we talk a lot of trash to each other, but I think it makes us better. As the BYU quarterback in Provo and in Utah, and even in the church, to be honest, there's a lot of, uh, somewhat of a celebrity, and so with that comes scrutiny. How do you manage the scrutiny of being a BYU quarterback? Um, to be honest with you, you just try not to pay attention to it. Uh, you don't read the newspapers. You don't, you don't read what people are, even, even if you had a great game, uh, I try to not read the newspapers because uh, they'll make you better than you seem and, and uh, they'll scrutinize you more than you deserve. So I think it's just trying to keep a level head. Uh, the opinions that matter most to me are my teammates and my coaches. Um, and if they're saying that I'm doing the right things and that I'm performing well, then that's what I care about. So just not paying attention to that stuff. Uh, staying within yourself and just uh, working hard no matter what happens. In 2008, why will BYU be successful yet again? Oh, I think it just, uh, we got a lot of good guys coming back. I think the coaches, coaches are leading us in the right direction and I think we're working harder than we've ever worked before. So um, again, the expectations are high and uh, we know what our goals are and we know what we want to achieve. And I think if you have a, an ending goal or, or a vision of what you want to achieve, then I think it's easier to get there. And I think that's what the program's going to right now. Well, we wish you the best of luck in 2008 and hopefully land in a BCS game by the end. Uh -huh. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Mike. Uh -huh.